Hi everybody, Kenny with Ugly Tent. Welcome back into Basic Wilderness Survival. Today we're going to be talking about backpacks. So as you can see here, I've got a lot of backpacks laid on the shop table. I have got day packs, I've got map satchels, I've got haversacks, sling pack, Alice pack, uh, mini Alice pack. Um, you name it, I've got it here. Okay, so let's jump into it. This is my handy dandy black iron pipe backpack holder. Made this years ago. Um, you just put together like Legos. So I also put this in my man cave. You can watch the video on that, how I uh, hang my backpacks up in the, I think it's called the ultimate man cave. You can see the progression of the man cave and how I built it. And uh, also uh, see how these, these are made. You know the backpack stands are made so anyway let's get into the backpacks themselves so backpacks are measured in liters or cubic inches or sometimes both so most commonly you're going to see liters this is a 45 liter vanquest mark IV. this is one of my favorite packs this is my preferred overnight pack 45 liters is a really good size in my opinion for overnighting However, this has a lot of attachment points. This is what this is, the molly webbing on the side. And you can see it here too. There's molly webbing on this side. So there's plenty of ways to add more to this bag with the molly attachments. So this right here is the, the molly webbing is cut. It's about an inch wide. And it's just a, basically a cut in the fabric that you can lash a molly strap. So this is a molly strap here. See how this works? And then this just lashes through these other attachment points. And now you've added a pouch to uh, create more space or more carrying capacity for your backpack. Now, when I talk about backpacks, I'm not talking about backpacking. I'm not talking about grabbing a map and putting in 25 miles uh, to certain destinations. You know, mile three has an overlook mile seven or eight has this um, panoramic view so that's the difference in bushcrafting and practicing wilderness survival so i like the bushcrafting and the practicing wilderness survival better because you're immersing yourself in the wilderness so you get to see more of the animals you get to see more of nature more of what's going on rather than just doing the miles and the trees are rushing by you you know when you're backpacking and if you like backpacking I say go for it, as a lot of people do. I did for years, for decades. You know, I did a lot of backpacking. But the older I get, the more I like the immersion rather than the distance. For this video purpose, I'm gonna be talking about internal frame backpacks and frameless backpacks. I'm not gonna talk about external frame backpacks. For those that are mostly used for uh, probably backpackers, old school backpackers, and maybe hunters that use the external frame system. And that's the one with the bars on the outside that you can lash stuff to it, put your bed roll, you know, it's got a pack attached to it, put stuff underneath. It's just an old school way of using a backpack. And I, my buddy Bob, hello Bob and Berkeley, um, they lo he loves an external frame pack. So anytime we would go out in the woods, uh, go for a survival weekend or whatever, he would borrow my external frame backpack. And we did some really good stuff. We did some extreme cold like this before i videoed everything we did some extreme cold uh wilderness adventures um, it was probably the coldest i've ever been in my life was with my buddy bob but anyway uh, here i go again getting, on, getting off track so we're going to talk about internal frames and frameless packs this is an internal frame pack so this is an internal frame pack and you can see it's got stays inside here there's like either plastic or there's going to be some kind of wire system on the back side or inside here or against your back to where it, it keeps its shape you know it'll stand up on its own so you don't see the frame system that's why it's called internal frame the frameless pack is so the frameless pack is more like your day packs. So this has a this has a frame sheet in it, a foam frame sheet to give it some rigidity. 
but there's no there's no uh, metal bars or plastic real hard plastic bars or anything to make it stand up on its own so it's more flexible and then you get even more flexible with something like this which is a canvas bag with no frame sheet so that is frameless so there are different applications for internal frame frameless uh, frame sheets you know that's something that you may want to look into depending on what you want what you're wanting to do so while we're at it let's go with the small packs your day packs are like this hidden woodsman bottle 23 in the 23 stands for 23 liters and this is measured in liters i have rigged this one up to where it has a haversack that detaches so you can actually take this off and make a haversack or keep it on as a lid but let's say we take this off so this is the lid for the backpack or they call it the brains the lid so let's say we take it off now we have a roll top so this is what they call a roll top backpack and it's just like it says most of these this is water resistant or not waterproof but a lot of your dry bags that are waterproof have the same type of roll top and all you do is pinch it together roll it down Oops, that's fine. Okay. and then clip it back together now you have a secure pack so if you haven't seen the video on how I did that uh, made that a haversack check that out so this is an army surplus style pack this is your that's called a um, mini Alice pack and then the old Alice packs what went on the external frame of the military packs. The external frame of these military packs was made out of metal or really, really um, thick, hard plastic. And they're not as comfortable. I know there's some guys out there, former uh, military guys, are going to say, yeah, man, that's the only way it goes, the, the Alice pack. That's fine if that's what you like. I don't find the Alice pack very comfortable, especially when you're used to carrying a Mark IV. You know van quest with all the padding and stuff but these are great for day hikes it's just you know it's not even it doesn't even have a padded strap this is great for a bug out bag this is great for a get home bag keep in your car and you can usually tell many alice packs or an alice pack because of the pockets it's got this specific look to it it's got your lid and it's got your three outside pockets and then the inside uh, pocket itself main compartment now this bag here is my personal EDC bag. EDC is the Everyday Carry. It's an acronym for Everyday Carry. It's a sling bag that I carry. It's by VanQuest. This is basically taking the place of the briefcase. Most men now carry an EDC bag rather than a briefcase. And this is concealed carry compatible. In the back I have my concealed carry. The other great thing about this is I can add, and it comes with both straps, I can add another strap to this point here and make this a backpack. Then since I don't wear it as a backpack, I wear it as a sling pack. That's how I keep it. So while we're talking about sling packs, let's look at this one. This is an old Bank West Trident. This is my camera bag. Again, now this is a sling pack that cannot be made into a backpack. It only has the, the one option. They can right side carry or left side carry. This is mine, made for right side carry. It's basically what it says, it's a sling pack. Sling it over your shoulder and go. So now we know one strap means a sling pack, two straps is a backpack. These are called grab handles. And this has a lot of grab handles on it. That's the one of the great things about VanQuest is they include uh, a lot of grab handles, even on their Urban EDC stuff. You know, if you want to carry this like a briefcase, it's got a grab handle on that side, grab handle on this side. It's got them everywhere. I love this pack. This is one of my favorites. So this has got my concealed carry in it, an iPad, my calendar. Um, papers and information and then in the front pocket I have got all kinds of stuff I've got more VanQuest 
stuff. See, it's got a little hook and loop, ways to carry things. You know, this is this is the bag I live out of every day. And that's why they call it everyday carry. So if you're new to this prepping and survival, EDC is a big buzzword or buzz acronym, everyday carry is the phrase. Okay, so now we've talked about sling packs, we've talked about uh, frameless backpacks, internal frame backpack. Let's talk about haversacks. This is a hidden woodsman basic haversack. This is just your very basic haversack. And you can see it just has the, this has an axe loop, to, you know, carry a hatchet or whatever, or a tripod. I've used to carry my little camera tripod. And then inside, just your basic compartment and a zipper compartment. But I call this the Indiana Jones bag. You know, whenever somebody says, well, what's a haversack? It's like, remember what Indiana Jones used to carry? That's basically a haversack. Although, I believe he called his a satchel, which I still have a satchel too. So the satchel I carry is this. This is just your basic canvas satchel. A little bit of leather on it. It's a little more dressy. I use it for business uses. Use it to carry a laptop. Just your, your basic stuff that's not wilderness related. But you can still use a satchel for the wilderness. So real big right now is the um, beloved fanny pack, waist pack. These have become very fashionable right now, even for men. And they're great for concealed carry. So more than likely, if you see a man carrying a fanny pack, waist pack, whatever you want to call it, he's probably got a gun in it, which he's probably a uh, sheepdog anyway, which means he's got his concealed carry, he trains with it. He's probably not the bad guy, you know. Use your own judgment, but more than likely, if someone, if there's a tough looking dude with a fanny pack, he's probably a good guy with a concealed carry. And as we talked or discussed earlier, there are numerous, whew, unlimited amount of pouches and, and things you can add, accessories from in basically, you can add to your backpacks. And I love my accessories. And uh, this is a hydration bladder. This is basically designed to hold a water bladder and a few of your items like wallet and keys or whatever. If you're trail running, going for a quick day hike, uh, if you don't want to carry a lot, you just want to go lightweight. This is a, these little hydration packs are nice little packs. There's expensive ones, like you can get like a Camelback, which is really expensive. They're high quality, but they're expensive. Or you can get a knockoff. And if you're not using it a lot, I mean, this is one from my shop, $23.99, you know, and I'm not trying to sell this, I'm just saying there are alternatives. Tons of them on Amazon, all over the place. Butt packs. Man, it's one of my favorites. There's so many uses for the butt pack. And this can be used in your vehicle. This can be mounted to molly systems in your vehicle if you do any overlanding. Uh, this has got the Alice clips on it, the old school Alice clips. But you can attach these real easy to uh, any pack or, or attach it to make it, you know, on your belt system. There's ways you can use this. And they make it, I have a new one. I've sold it out. There's a, a newer version with a molly attached to it that's not canvas, it's nylon. I like the canvas. I just think the canvas butt pack is just really cool. And it's exactly what it says. It's designed to wear on your backside, close to your butt. You know, it's kind of like a reverse fanny pack. Next, we get into this little bag here, which is map case or comms case. So my friend Chris, uh, otherwise known as Kentucky Woodsman, he uses this map case for his ham radio comms kit. Makes a fantastic little hammer yo comms kit. So there's small packs like this that are very similar to the haversack. All right, so let's get into more nomenclature of the backpack. Now, obviously, you've got the, the grab handle. This does not have a, a lid on top. This is a clamshell design, which means when you open it, it opens just like it says, like a clam. I have to undo these. So this opens like a clam.
then you've got everything on the inside. So you can access very easily and very quickly all of your gear. You know, this goes all the way to the bottom. And this has a sleeping bag compartment in the bottom. A lot of your overnight packs will have a separate place for sleeping bag or um, if you have a rain fly that's wet and you don't want the rest of your gear to get wet, you stuff it in here. I've done that. Uh, like I said, this thing's been on many adventures with me, but you can tell by the dirt. We're going to go over how to clean these too. The side pockets are designed for your water bottles or anything that you want to carry in here and strap down that you don't want to put on the inside, whether it be a folding saw, a small hatchet, something like that. Now the waist belt itself has my attachment points. And I have got on this one a dump pouch. This is another one of those accessories. If you're not familiar with, these things are wonderful. All it is is a little pouch that folds out to make a bigger pouch. This is great for water bottles, canteens, cook kits, anything. Tender gathering, you know, if you're out trying to gather uh, tinder and uh, pieces of kindling for your fire, you can stuff them in there. You can use it for a shell bag for range shooting. You know, if you're at the range shooting, you can use it to put empty or spent casings in or, or whatever. You know, there's just countless numbers, countless number of things you can use these dump pouches for. And there's a good, and there's another good example of my attachment points on the waist belt. So if you notice, a lot of your day packs won't have a waist belt on it. You know, it's just your straps, basically. Where a, your larger packs, your bigger packs, have a nice, comfortable waist belt on it. As you can see on this one, it is adjustable. You can adjust the placement of the shoulder pads. You can move them up, move them down. I've got them exactly where I want them. So if you're not familiar with backpacks, they have a quick release strap right here. You just pull up on it and it releases. Pull down and tightens it up. Okay, so I'm gonna release it. Now, obviously I don't have anything in this pack, so it's not heavy. And there's different ways to put a pack on. I'm not gonna go into that. There's a military flip over your head to put it on. You can set it on a log and walk into, you know, uh, back into it if it's heavy. There's all kinds of ways to put a backpack on. All right, so let's put this thing on. All right, once we get it on, first thing we'll do is attach or, or um, secure our waist belt. So I'll put the waist belt on, tighten it up, get it even, get the buckle in the middle. Now the purpose of the waist belt is to carry the load. This is really what carries your load on a backpack, not the straps. So if you notice, if I take this strap off, it pretty much stays on me because of the waist belt. And that's what you want. You want something that's going to carry the heavy load, not the straps. They work together. Obviously the straps help also. Tighten those down. Snap it in. This is your starting strap. This keeps the um, backpack straps from rotting to the outside. This keeps them centered where you want them. You can adjust that. Most of your backpacks these days have the emergency whistle on it, which is pretty handy. So let's talk about load stabilizers. See that strap right there? See how I can tighten that up? Same with the other side. Where is it at? Yeah, right there. I can tighten it up. And what that does, that draws my backpack into my back. You know, brings, here's the backpack, here's your back. It brings it into your back. Just like if you're carrying a heavy box, you've got the box out here, it hurts your back. But if you put the box close to your body and carry it the way you're supposed to, it doesn't hurt your back. It doesn't hurt near as bad as if you're trying to carry something out this way. So that's the purpose of the low stabilizers. You've got them here on the side and here on this side too. And again, those are really to bring the body of the backpack into your body. It just makes it more like you're, you're one. You know, it really tightens it up. And there's, they're all over. You know, you can find stuff. The idea behind the backpack is to cinch it in as tight as you can get it to where it hugs your back makes it easier for you to move in the woods, to move on the trail without hurting your body. Remember when you're packing your backpack, you want the heavy stuff on the bottom or towards the middle of your back. 
Now you can put a sleeping bag, which is not your heaviest piece, in the bottom and then start putting your heavier items in the middle, middle bottom, and work your way up. The, the top obviously should be the lighter part of your backpack. Again, the quick release. Now see how I've got that released? And then I can release the belt and get the backpack off. And with a good grab handle and you swing it around, rest it on your leg, you can hold your backpack up until you get it to a tree um, or get it somewhere safe. And as you can see by the mud, as you can see by the mud on this, yeah, it's been through the works. We're going to show you how to clean this though real quick too, how to take care of your backpack. So this is the point of the presentation where I would normally say, any questions? So this is what I do with the old headlamps. I put an old headlamp on here because the way the headlamps are designed for straps, they usually fit the backpack straps really nicely. And you can see how that just rides on there. This lives on there. I charge it up before I go out, but actually it's not been charged in a long time. And it still has a lot of light left on it. Huh. Very nice. So, and then on the other side lives my Leatherman. And this is actually Dad's old Leatherman. And I've got this on there with Velcro straps as well as using the Molly strap that was on the uh, strap itself. All right, so let's talk about how to clean the backpack. Get you a brush, wipe off the loose stuff. Okay. Just get water, spray a little bit on there. Just your average rag, an old t-shirt for wiping it down. If it doesn't come off with that, and you're gonna use your basic, like dishwashing liquid or hand soap, something real mild. Don't want anything abrasive. Obviously you never want to throw one of these in the washing machine. You'll destroy the glue and the stitching and all the other stuff on it. That's all there is to it. Just keep wiping, rinse and repeat. Get all that junk cleaned off there. After I get done with this, I'm gonna treat it with permethrin, which is the stuff that keeps critters away from my backpack. And if you want to treat it with a waterproofing, you can do that too. I say critters, I mean ticks and bugs and stuff like that. I don't mean raccoons. So one more thing to discuss, the reason I pick these type backpacks, the military grade backpacks, they're more rugged. You know, they're, they can handle the abuse. Uh, I don't think I have. No, I have another VanQuest that's been dropped off or fell off of a um, side by side. We were going through the wilderness and it just completely fell off, rolled down a hill, picked it up, it was fine, threw it in the back of the side by side and secured it better this time and it did fine. It didn't have a hole or a scratch or tear in it. If you had done that with a um, high-end backpacking backpack, like a, uh, well, I don't want to say names, but some of your high-end companies, uh, it would have tore to shreds, you know. But those backpacks are lightweight and they're designed for comfort. They're not designed for durability or designed to be rugged, so they're designed for high mileage. If somebody's doing 15, 20 miles a day on the Appalachian Trail, uh, or even at 10 to 12, that's a lot, um, then they want that backpack rather than these military grade backpacks that the bushcrafters and the survivalists, wilderness survivalists like to use. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. I think the next one's going to be sleep systems. So look forward to that. We'll talk about sleeping bags and sleep systems. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.